Hello, and in this video I want to look at a circuit which can solve the two problems that we identified with the simple comparator circuit. The fact that when the two input voltages to the comparator are very close together, the output of the basic comparator can be somewhere in between its two output voltages. And the fact that if we're using it to interface a noisy analogue signal to the digital world, we can get multiple edges when the analogue input goes across the digital threshold. The circuit that solves both of these problems is known as the Schmidt trigger. And it looks like this. You'll see the difference between the circuit and the basic comparator is the addition of these two resistors. A resistor on the input and this feedback resistor. But unusually for op-amp circuits, this feedback resistor gives positive feedback. It takes a sample of the output voltage and feeds it back into the non-inverting input. Now that's not what is done in any of the linear op-amp circuits. Positive feedback tends to reinforce the output voltage of an op-amp. If the op-amp is going positive, positive feedback will make it go even more positive. If the output is going negative towards its negative voltage supply rail, positive feedback will try and push it even more negative. So this positive feedback is pushing it away from any equilibrium point that it might have in the middle of its voltage range. It also has a rather interesting effect on the switching threshold, the voltage at which the op-amp changes from its low voltage to its high voltage. It splits the threshold, so we no longer just have one voltage threshold, we have two. It's perhaps not obvious how this works, so I've wired one up in the simulator. Here we have the circuit in the simulator. If I open this switch, then what we've basically got is a comparator, just like we've seen before. If the input goes above the threshold, which is currently set to 2.5 volts, then the output will switch and go to its maximum positive value of 5 volts in this case. If the input is below the 2.5 volt threshold, then the output switches and goes to 0 volts. And all it does is tell you whether the input is above or below the threshold 2.5 volts. But close this switch and something much more interesting happens. We're at 2 volts at the moment and the output is positive. At the positive rail, 5 volts. If I go negative, then at low voltages the output goes to its lowest possible value, zero in this case, as we would expect. But if I go back to 2 volts, when we were last at a 2 volt input, the output of this circuit was 5 volts. Now it's zero. If we go positive, of course, then the output will go back to a positive value of 5 volts in this case, and we go back to 2 volts, and the output is still positive. There's a range of voltages, in other words, including 2 volts, in which this circuit has two possible output voltages. It can either be 0 or 5 volts, and it depends on what voltage it was most recently showing. We have a circuit here which has some memory. It remembers whether it most recently went high or went low, and around 2 volts it just stays where it was. How is this happening? Well, we can analyse the circuit quite readily, actually, using the good old potential divider equation. Supposing the output is at 5 volts, as we can see in the diagram at the moment. What voltage does the input have to be at in order to get the output to go to ground? Well, what we've got here with these two resistors is a potential divider. We've got 5 volts at this point here, that's my output at the moment, going through a 2k resistor, and then through a 1k resistor, down to our input voltage, which I'll just call x. Now, if I want the comparator to change its state, then I need the input to the non-inverting input to go below the inverting input. I need this point here to be slightly under 2.5 volts. 
very slightly under 2.5 volts. In fact, to calculate what we need, let's just set this to 2.5 volts. Then what we have here is a standard potential divider. We can analyze this just as we've done before. The current flowing down through this 2K resistor is going to be, well, the voltage across this 2K resistor is 5 minus 2.5, which is just 2.5 volts. And the value of the resistor is 2K. So the current flowing down this potential divider will be 2.5 divided by 2K. That means the voltage across this 1K resistor here must be 2.5 over 2K times 1K, the current times the resistance. And if I add the value of X to the voltage across this resistor here, I will get to the voltage at this point here. In other words, X plus the voltage across this resistor must be 2.5 volts. And if X goes any lower than that, then the voltage here will go slightly lower than 2.5 volts and our comparator will flip over and change state. Well, that K will cancel with that K. That just gives me X plus 1.25 equals 2.5 or X equals 1.25 volts. That's the voltage that I need to get to in order to make my comparator change state. Let's see, 1.25, not quite there, not quite, okay, spot on there. So it's going to change at the next little movement of this slider. There it goes. How about when it's negative, what voltage do you have to put on the input to make it go high again? Once again, potential divider. This time, naught volts here. Our 2K resistor there, our 1K resistor here, our input X, and we need that point there to be just slightly above 2.5 volts in order to get the non-inverting input higher than the inverting input and our comparator to change state. What voltage do we need for X? Well, here, one end of our potential divider is at ground, naught volts, so we can just apply the simple potential divider equation. 2.5 volts, V out of our potential divider is V in, X, times this resistor, 2K, divided by the sum of the two resistors, which is 1K plus 2K, or 3K. The Ks cancel. That would give me 7.5 divided by 2, or 3.75 volts. So that's the voltage I need at the input in order to make this comparator change state and go high again. Not quite there, not quite there, almost. Got it, right there just gone above 3.75 volts and the comparator has swung and is now outputting a high value. So in other words, we've got two switching thresholds. We've got this high switching threshold here at 3.75 volts, which is the switching threshold for a rising edge to cause the output to go high. And we have another threshold here at 1.25 volts, which is where the output goes low when the input goes below that threshold. And that solves both of our problems. There is now no situation in which the input being very close to the threshold, around 2.5 volts, causes the output of the comparator to be somewhere between 0 and 5 volts. It has to get to 3.75 volts before the comparator gets to 5 volts, and then it stays there until the input gets to 1.25 volts before it goes low. And it also solves the problem with that noisy analog input to a digital circuit. Because now, if I have a analog noisy waveform coming in that looks like this, 
nothing will happen on the output of the comparator until we get to that point there where the input goes above the rising edge threshold for the first time. At that point, the output will suddenly go high. And the fact that the input then goes below that 3.75 volt threshold doesn't make any difference, because to get the output to go low again, the input would have to go all the way down to 1.25 volts. So we have a nice, clean, single edge to feed into our digital circuit. All we need to do is ensure that the gap between these two switching thresholds is bigger than the amount of noise that we have on our analog signal. We can see this circuit working in the simulator as well. Here I've built the circuit and the input is a 2 volt zero to peak sine wave with a 2 volt offset. So it's going to be oscillating between zero and four volts. And that's going to feed into our comparator Schmidt trigger circuit, which has those two thresholds at 1.25 volts and 3.75 volts. And let's see what happens. As you can see, the output of the comparator goes low only when the input goes below the lower switching threshold of 1.25 volts, and then only goes high again when the input goes above the higher switching threshold, which at the moment is set to 3.75 volts. It's a very common circuit and very useful in practice. I'll just mention one quick trade-off about the design of a Schmidt trigger, and that is how far apart these two thresholds are. If they're too far apart, then you do get an additional delay in the switching of the output of the comparator. In this case here, for example, if the input thresholds were, say, there and there, then we would still have only a single rising edge, but the rising edge would happen at that point here, rather than having to wait until you get to that point there. But if the thresholds are too close together, say, there, and there, then we would no longer have a single rising edge. We'd have a rising edge here, a falling edge here, and another rising edge there. So ideally, in order to make the delay of the comparator as small as possible, you want the thresholds to be just big enough to avoid any multiple edges caused by the noise going above one threshold and then down through the other threshold. That's all for comparators, Schmidt triggers, and for op-amps being the nonlinear elements. Next time, we'll start having a look at some interesting circuits you can make with diodes and op-amps.